Hello class, in this video I'll share my feedback to the first project. Um, so I'm glad everyone did a good job on the first project models um, and you have used all the techniques you learned from the class and used the techniques on creating your model. And I also see some of you even challenged themselves and uh, they move far beyond what I have taught in class. So they did a lot of self-research um, on new techniques, for example, um, texturing the model uh, or use dynamics to create a flag models uh, or, you know, um, exploring the lighting in Unity 3D. So these are the techniques I'm going to cover in the next few projects. Uh, but I'm glad some of you already, um, you know, learned these by themselves and they have used those techniques in their models. Um, so first, I'll show you all the models everyone have created. Uh, so usually, um, in the general class, in the, in the uh, you know face-to-face -face class, I will have everyone to be on the teaching station and present your works. You're going to show us the reference images uh, that inspired um, your yourself from creating the model, and then you're going to show us the model you have created. But since now we are doing everything online, and I thought this would be most uh, efficient way that I just show you um, all the works you have created. All right, so I'm going to show you my general feedbacks, and then I'm going to post my uh, specific feedback to everyone's model on the grading portal. Okay, and also in this video, I'm going to also answer um, questions to three major issues. Um, you know, some of you had. So uh, these issues apply to all of you. You know, uh, you may have this issue, uh, you may not have this issue, but uh, uh, you know, this is the general issues everyone can have in your, in your model or in Unity 3D. Okay, so first let's take a look of uh, Nia's model. And this is a reference image. Oops, let me close that. This is a reference image that uh, she have used and okay so this is her model so she created a nice building okay and Andy's model and I'll go inside and I will temporarily separate all of the objects so I can select each individual model and lock my view. And also I will turn on the shading, the ambient occlusion, so you can see it better. So and, um, Andy did a very good job on you know building the details. As you can see the pillows, the pillow models, okay. And also all these uh, containers, it's very creative. And here's the bedroom, here's a closet. Okay, and beneath here's the bed. And as you can see, she created different versions of her pillows. Okay, here's the frames on the wall. And here's the desk. Okay, and then let me show you the Arnoldo's work. Okay, um, Arnoldo did a very good job on, you know, uh, material. He already explored material for the model and um, all the different color you see here is different materials that he gave uh, the different materials for a different color. And he used the text type tool to create this model which uh, has the different text. Okay, and he also uh, did texturing for his model um, you know, since um, uh, he didn't have the texture in the submission, so I cannot show the texture on the building. Okay, but he have the bricks uh, texture on the on the building that uh, it will show on the model. I'm going to show you um, his uh, you know his game later on, so the texture will show on the on the game actually. Okay, and here here's the traffic lights. All right, and then Ben's work. Okay, 
and then created the parliament building and we can see through the window we have the table dining table and some containers inside okay and Keisha's work And Keisha created a cartoonish um, street scene. Okay. And then Chaz's work. And Chaz created an indoor scene. And we can see the furniture he created. Okay, so he used all the techniques he learned from the class for creating the model. And then Aminio's work. He did a very good job on you know, even creating the puppy. This is supposed to be a sculpture, but since the sculpture, uh, the human sculpture is very detailed, and we're going to talk about human modeling you know, in later projects, so you will be able to build a detailed human cap, uh, character. Okay, as you can see, he did a very good job on uh, building this uh, large space, this public space. It's a square in New York City. And here are the stairs. And he also um, explored how to use uh, the dynamics, okay, and cloth to create a, the, the flag with the wrinkles. Uh, this is also something I'm going to talk about in the later course, uh, in the later uh, project. Remember we have talked about how to use the end cloth to build the, um, the tablecloth, right? So uh, it's the same thing we're going to use, which is end cloth. Uh, however, the difference is you will apply the wind, you know, and attach this flag to the pole here to knock it here and then you can simulate and then pose to the frame you like the best and then uh, denote history and you'll have the model all right so now let's take a look of uh, Aaron Porter's model all okay Aaron's model has a lot of details Okay, he, she also created an indoor scene, and you can see all of these uh, details that uh, she created for her house model. All of these books, and she even arranged the books to into different directions and uh, different sizes, different thickness. So these are all the details that gives the model the personality, right? And uh, from these details, you will think about you know who lives it here and what's the uh, characteristic, what's the personality of the people who lives here. Okay, and here's other furnitures. And another thing I would like to note in uh, Aaron Porter's model is that all of the models has realistic scale. Okay, as you can see. Um, the closet here and the countertop here, they all has relative uh, realistic scale, you know. And here's the bedroom. Okay. And then Ethan's model. So in Ethan's model, first you will um, you will see the bedroom scene, okay? This bedroom scene, and uh, he created all these uh, furnitures. And then if you walk out and you look outside, you know that's the buildings, skyscrapers that are around the house, around the apartment, okay? And he created a lot of details on the building. For example, here you can see all these, uh, you know, texture, the windows, 
on the building. Here are the windows. And street light. And stairs and trash cans. Okay. And Hankizahar's model. So uh, he did a very good job on building. What's the name of this uh, house? Is a pumpkin pumpkin house. Okay, and here's uh, his uh, reference. As you can see, it's a historical house. Okay, I'm really impressed um, about how detailed his model is. He created this uh, large scale house. This environment. Okay. And you can even go into the building, and you can see he has, you know, um, he has modeled the each room, and also the stairs that you can go up, up floor, and then you can go to the second floor, and there's a different rooms, and then you'll find stairs. For example, here, now you can go to the third floor, and here, you know, another space that you can go out and take a look of for uh, the outside sceneries. And then you can continue go stairs and go to the fourth floor, which is the top. Okay, so the model is really detailed and the structure is very detailed and, um, you know, you can go into the building, go into each room and check the different spaces. I use the stairs to go to different levels. Okay, so this is a very good example of outdoor, uh, outdoor and indoor house modeling project. Okay, um, and let me just you know show you very quick about the game he created. Um, since I only I'm only capturing part of my screen, so you cannot see you know. Um, the full the full frame of uh, his game, but here is it. As you can see, I can walk into the building, right? And I don't want to get too close because I said you could only see part of my screen. But you can walk into the building and you know go to different levels, and it's a very detailed house model. All right. So now let's take a look of Israel's model. Take some time to note, okay. So, is for Israel, uh, he did a lot of research on, you know, uh, tree modeling. So uh, he reached out to me several times when he is working on the first project. Okay, so for the model. Okay, it doesn't look uh, that he ha has a lot of uh, models. He has a lot of object in the scene. However, you know he did a lot of research on how to model the tree and how to do textures on the object. And we even talked about you know how to use a transparency map that he can use a texture map to build each uh, each leaves, and then you know duplicate the leaf and make this whole tree. Okay, so that's a very good research. And so basically for his model is based on you know his dream, one of his dream. Okay, it'll look better with the texture mode. So he has a texture to all the objects. And how's his model? Um so this is one issue I have talked about first. Model turned into green color in Maya. So that is an uh, issue with the uh, material. So sometimes your model lose the material. Okay. So you can select all of the models that has this uh, light green color and just go to Hypershade, which you can go to Windows, Rendering Editor, Hypershade. Okay. This is for material and textures. 
and number one material is the default material. You know, whenever you create a new scene, this is the default material, and then you can just right click and assign this default material to your model. Okay, if it doesn't fix it, just go to create create a new number material and apply you know the new material you have created and it should fix the issue. Alright. So now let's see Hazi used Google Map as a reference, you know, for modeling. And he created a lot of details on each of the buildings. As you can see the windows, the door, you know, and even for first floor is are the shops. And I can imagine that uh, later on when he did the texture maps, he applied texture to all of these shops and have those uh, brandings on each of the shop. That will be, you know, fantastic to see. Okay, here's a little park. And you can walk in the street and check each of the building. Okay, there's another side of the street and it looks like uh, Hazi is trying to uh, model the flag. Uh, so later on we'll talk about that. You can use uh, the dynamics to create a flag using Encon. All right. So now let's see uh, Rose model. So Rose also did a very good job on street modeling. He has all these details on the building. And I can take a look of uh, each windows. You know, the window is uh, these uh, slide windows you can open from the bottom. Uh, he has a balcony. Okay. And next, Snooker's model. He created a, uh, a set of buildings. Okay, and with Lucas model, I want to talk about another thing. You know, some faces of the model disappeared in Unity. Um, I'm going to use a Lucas game and also Arnoldo's game as example. Okay, to talk about this issue. So let's see if I open his model. Let's see windowed. So you can see the whole scene. See, that's what I see. Uh, that's what I said. Uh, as you can see, the wall of the building disappeared, right? But I see the wall is still there. I cannot go through it. Okay, what caused this happen? Um, basically, here he has all this plan. Okay, as the wall. However, different than Maya, in Unity, um, you could only see one side of the plan, which is this side, the positive side. As you can see in Maya, the positive side, it will show in black color, right? It doesn't have any color, but we can still see it. It is a wall, it is a plan, it is not transparent. However, in Unity 3D, you could only see one side, which is this side, and another side it will be disappeared. Okay, so that's that's why it caused this problem. So a common practice that how artists would uh, fix this issue is, for example, when you have this wall, and since this plan, since it only has you know one side, and another side it will disappear. So what you can do is, you know, first I will select this plan and I would uh, go to modify and send a pivot. So then my pivot is on this plan. And then I would hit Command D to make a duplication. And for this duplicated uh, plan, I would um, just rotate it. And rotate it at 180 degree along Y, right? So here is it. It'll overlap with that plan. So that's to see when you import uh, this model into Unity 3D, this plan, it has you know, two plans. One, the positive side is this side. One, the positive side is this side. So uh, from either side of this plan, 
and then you uh, the player will see this plan so that's how people will fix this issue another practice is in unit 3d um, you know you can um, create a double side uh, double side uh, material that when you apply that material to your model for example this plan if it only has one face uh, it will sh still show the negative side of the face however it is a little bit more complex we'll talk about that later on in unit 3d okay uh, so this practice is uh, is what I suggested and is the um, the practice that most of the game artists that would do okay uh, now let's move on for Michael's model oops this is the FBX file so I will uh, manually open it in Maya so here let me create a new scene Here is it. So uh, Michael created his scene based on this um, painting. It's more like an impression of New York City. And this is the model that he created. Okay, and as you can see, he also created a camera. So from this view is what he see on the painting. Okay, and then Sarah's work. So Sarah also created a, a um, indoor model, indoor house model. And uh, he created, she created all these uh, furnitures. Okay, as, we, as you can see, we can see all the details she created. Okay, and then let's see um, third issue. Okay, so um, when you develop a game, you need to 3D, you may notice that sometimes uh, when you get really close to your model, for example, the wall of the house, you can see through the model, you can see through the house. So here, let me show you Arnoldo's model. Okay, this is what I said. See, Arnoldo also created a texture for his model. So if I get very close to this house, uh, not this one, maybe, oops, looks like he actually fixed that issue. But sometimes if you, get really close to your building like what I'm doing right now uh, you will notice that you, this wall is transparent you can see through it so the reason is because you know in Unity 3D on the player's camera uh, there's a setting which is decides how far you can see in the scene and how close you can see so if um, you pull a number you know which is um, smaller than the distance you and this wall and then this wall will disappear and you can see through it okay so we'll we'll get there when we are talking more about unity 3d okay uh, here let's see in this um, subway station as you can see if I enter this subway station the wall disappeared which is the issue I talked about earlier since the wall only has one side okay so what you can do is you will just have to duplicate this object and you know create a double face of it so for all of those models, it's a little bit different. Let me show you. So for his model, as you can see, this is a whole piece, right? Uh, it's not like one face. You can just duplicate and, uh, and rotate. So this is a whole cube. And if I just duplicate and rotate, I cannot you know, let it match with the shape. So what I can do is I can just duplicate this whole thing see this is what I have duplicated and then you can just go to um, mesh and then actually go to mesh display and reverse so what will happen is um, see this is how it looks basically I reversed all of the faces on this model I just selected 
and this is the original one okay and then when you overlap them together you know in my eye you will look weird it all flashing because you have double faces right now right however when you import this model this whole thing into unity 3d uh, no matter which part your player see it will have a positive face so the model will display correctly in unity 3d so that uh, that is the uh, the main way the main solution that the uh, game artist will do to solve this uh, issue okay so that is the general feedback to everyone's work from um, you know this next week the project one assignment and then um, in the greeting portal you will be able to see my feedback to uh, my specific feedback to your work all right